Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of my series Finite Differences for Elliptic Partial Differential Equations. My name is Frank and welcome on my channel. Before we hop into the upwind discretization, we do a short recapitulation. What have we done in part 1? In part 1 we did some, uh, we started with the continuous problem, the negative second derivative of a function u equals a function f inside a given domain and on the boundary the function is zero. These are then called the Riemann boundary conditions. And we used finite differences to tackle this problem and ended up with a discretized problem which you can see here. This obviously is a system of linear equations and we have rewritten this in a matrix form which then can be tackled by well, whatever numerical method you prefer. In the second part we kind of slightly increase the difficulty of the problem by replacing the Neumann uh, by, by replacing the Riemann boundary conditions by the slightly more complex Neumann boundary conditions. As you can see here, the difference here is that we do not impose um, conditions on the function u itself, but rather on its first order derivative. And in the end, we also discussed some conversions rate. If you're interested, just go into part two, and it was in the end where we discuss some convergence rates. Now it's time to bring in uh, some first order derivatives. You can see them here. So we extend our equations, uh, our equation which we want to, we want to look at uh, by the first order derivative. And I marked here some part in red and some part in green. The green part you should, only, should, should always should already be familiar with because this is the standard. Um, part we have all we always dealt with in the last parts. If you are a little bit more into modeling of physical processes, you know that the green part is used to model diffusion processes. And I added some parameter here. The parameter new is called the thermal conductivity. And the red part here is now the convection part. Because the first order derivative models the change of the function and uh, the function b models therefore the speed of the convection. So we can model how fast is the fluid, for instance, um, moved through our domain. And we want to look at this equation and see what kind of difficulties pop up here. The discretization of the diffusive part is standard. We have done this a couple of times before. And this will result in the following expression here. So nothing spectacular is going on here. More interesting now is the discretization of the convective part, so the first order derivative. If you have no better idea, you could always start with the standard central difference. You can see it here. And um, this will result in the following expression. So bi is of course b evaluated at xi. So bi over 2h. Uh, multiplied by uh, ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1. This, of course, is very easy to, imp to be implemented into our numerical scheme. And I have done this for you, and we will take a look at the, resulting, uh, at the, at the, at the results of the scheme. So we start with uh, new to be 1. f, so our right side of our equation, uh, is always kept 1, and so is b. So our convection speed is always one. Uh, we start with 10 discretization points. So this looks quite good. We have uh, our, no our Neumann, our Riemann boundary conditions satisfied, and we have a balance between the uh, diffusion and the convection. So this is actually what we expect. This looks good. Let's see what is going to happen if we now decrease the thermal conductivity. If we decrease the thermal conductivity, we expect the um, convection to be dominating. So since our function b is uh, always positive, we expect the wind, this is sometimes called the wind, to blow from the left to the right. So we expect that the uh, fluid or the gas is uh, moved to the right a little bit. And this looks good. Now nu is set to be 0.1, so the uh, convection is now dominating over the diffusion part. And you can see the wind is blowing our fluid or our gas to the right, or right part of the domain. This is what we expect. 
and this is what we get and this looks good. So I'm, I'm quite happy with this result. Now things turn out to be interesting. What happens if we decrease our thermal conductivity, our, our diffusive part even more? So let's set new to be 0 0.01. Now this is happening. New is now 0 0.01 and we get some weird oscillations going on here. So this is not what we expect from the physical behavior of a fluid. We expect something like this, but the wind should blow even stronger. So this is some weird oscillations going on here. So um, let's see what is going to happen if we decrease our parameter nu even more. So we now set nu to be 0 0.001. And now something, this is now completely, completely wrong. A completely wrong result is produced by our, by our numerical scheme. We have some oscillations are going on they well this is completely garbage um, maybe we can fix this if we increase our numeric our discretization points here n so this is just chosen to be 10 points so 10 points is not much maybe we can fix this if we increase it so let's set n to be 50 and now this is the result looks better but we still have oscillations, really strong oscillations going on here at the right part of the domain. If we now set n to be 100, well, the oscillations are still there. They have, there are less oscillations, but they are still oscillations. And if we now set n to be 500, we get the uh, expected behavior. We have a strong wind moving from left to right and nearly, nearly no diffusion parts or nearly new diffusive uh, impacts of the equation here. So you can see um, this scheme has some, some weird issues here. If the step size h is chosen too large and the discretization uh, and, and the parameter nu is chosen too small, or you can test it yourself if the, if the wind is chosen, if the parameter b is chosen too big, you get the same behavior. And in the next part, we will analyze this behavior, and this will this this the analyzation of this of this uh, problem will result in a new scheme, the so-called upwind discretization, and this will actually fix this behavior. Here you can see the equation again. Here you have the diffusive part in green, and in red you have the convection part and its associated discretizations. We now rearrange this discretization a little bit. We rearrange it by which part is added to the main diagonal of the resulting matrix and which part is not. Um, which is added to the main diagonal? Of course, every coefficient which stands in front of ui. And this is only uh, 2 new over h squared. For simplicity or for readability, I um, uh, moved out those h squared. And you see that only if effectively two new is added to the main diagonal. Every, every other term, uh, every other coefficient which stands in front of ui minus one or in front of ui plus one is not added to the main diagonal. So why is this important? I want to recall the definition uh, of the so-called strictly diagonally dominance. A matrix is, strict, is called strictly diagonally dominant if the uh, if the element of the diagonal is uh, bigger or bigger or equal, depending if you uh, if you want to be strictly diagonal dominant or just weakly diagonal dominant, so the uh, element of the diagonal must be bigger than this, than the um, sum of the resulting uh, of the resulting elements inside of this row. If you have such a strictly diagonal dominant matrix. Then you can show actually that the Jacobi and the Gauss-Seidel method uh, converge, are converging. You can weaken this a little bit, um, something like irreducibility comes into play and stuff like that. But what is most important here, or what I want to show you, what I want to tell you, a strong diagonal of a matrix is supporting the numerical stability uh, of the underlying uh, solver or will give um, stable results. And um, coming back to our discretization, um, how does this look in our case? Um, 
Let's assume that uh, new, so the, the um, thermal conductivity is small. Then we can see that actually that the elements of the diagonal are way smaller than the sum of the resulting elements. So two new is small. Um, well, you can see it here. This this equality is uh, if b i is big and h is big, the right hand side of this inequality um, is bigger than the left side, of course. This effect gets smaller and smaller if h becomes very small. Well, obviously because uh, b i is a fixed value, and a, well, you can see it here. Um, a similar argument holds for um, if if b so the wind or the convection part is large. And you can now see why our oscillations are occurring in our scheme um, for very small nu and for big H because our, di our diagonal is, um, is weak compared to the other elements of its row. And this is something we have to fix. Can we, so the question is, can we impose a, discreti a discretization such that the, um, the main diagonal is actually strengthened and not weakened? Then the answer to this question is the so-called upwind discretization of, uh, of u prime. So instead of using the central difference, um, which goes into left, which goes into the left and into the right part of our of our domain. We discretize against the wind, meaning we're using only the forward or the backward um, dif uh, difference. If uh, bi is less than zero, so the wind is coming from the white, um, we discretize with the forward difference, meaning we're looking against the wind. And similar, if bi is uh, positive, the wind is coming from the left, then we are discretizing to the left, so we're using the backward difference. Um, you can see the definition here. Uh, the, you can uh, have to ask ourselves uh, in which direction is the information or the wind actually flowing. By using the um, uh, forward or the backward difference, we add uh, something to the diagonal, to the main diagonal. You can see it here. There's a new i popping up. So there's always, um, in fact, one over h times b i is added to the diagonal. Hence, the uh, main diagonal is strengthened and not weakened. And this was actually our, our idea how we can stabilize our scheme. So this is the so-called upwind discretization. It's a very simple fix, but it's, it has a very, very great effect in for our stability. And we'll see this in a moment. So we now um, implement this into our scheme. And I will show you the, um, the outcome of this, of this uh, scheme. So we compare the um, outcome of the uh, upwind discretization with the central difference for the same for the same calculation we've done before. So in red you can always see the central difference, and in blue is our new scheme where we discretize the first order um, uh, the first order uh, derivative with the upwind discretization. You can see here um, if new is big. Um, we didn't have no problems at all. And you can see here the central difference and the upper discretization nearly produced the same results. So there's nothing spectacular here. Let's see what happens if we reduce our thermal conductivity. So this is where our, our problems occur. Um, for new equals 0 0.1, we didn't have any issues at all. And the results were the well, they don't look the, actually don't look the same, but we have only a very small discretization point, so this is okay. But now we had some oscillations going on if we decreased a new even more. On the other hand, we can now see that our upwind discretization, upwind discretization well, become it's stable. You can see it here. There are no oscillations occurring. And this is due to the fact that the main diagonal is now uh, stronger compared to its uh, to the other values of this row. And you can see the impact uh, quite drastically here. It becomes even more drastic if we increase new even more. Uh, this was where our central difference just produced garbage. Forget about the result, it's completely useless. Our upper discretization, however, even produced for a very 
big differentiation parameter, so meaning less differentiation points, it produced a very reasonable result. This looks good. This is what we expect. We have a strong wind coming from the left and a steep uh, drop down at the end. And of course, if we now increase our, our differentiation points, well, the upwind discretization becomes even better and the central difference becomes slightly better. You can see it here. Um, for 50 discretization points, we had still oscillations for the central difference and, uh, well, upwind discretization still stays stable. Similar for n equals 100. And for n equals 500, there's nearly no difference um, in, in the both solutions. So, this is nearly the end of the video. Um, let's do a short summary. Um, what I wanted to tell you in the whole video is, take care about your discretization. Don't simply use central difference because it might be the easiest looking solution. Think about the underlying physics. What is happening here? Which, in which direction is the information flowing? Because this led, in our case, this led to the choice of the uh, discretize against the wind idea. This is um, point number three. And this was, this was giving us the upwind discretization that this, well, gave us a very stable scheme. And uh, if you have some weird oscillations going on in your scheme and you have some matrices, well, take a look. Maybe, maybe you should strengthen your diagonal in your matrices. This is uh, sometimes a very good idea. So, I hope you enjoyed this small video uh, about the upwind discretizations and take care and see you in part four. <laughs> Bye.